I'm Megan. I'm Colin. And this is Pet Sitter Sitter Confessional. Confessional. An open and honest discussion about life as a pet sitter. Brought to you by Time to Pet and the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters. How do you provide personalized care? Katie Kinton, owner of Katie's Kennels, joins the show today to talk about her experience with business growth, but how she maintained her commitment to focusing on community and making connections with clients and potential clients. As a new mom, Katie has found new ways to balance her personal life and work, and she works hard to stay in tune with what her brand is and the voice of her business. Let's get started. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Again, my name is Katie, and I own Katie's Kennel. We are, um, we consider ourselves pet professionals and we service the Kansas City, Kansas and Missouri side. And we also just expanded into the Scottsdale, Arizona area as well. Um, We offer boutique pet care. Uh, Majority is in home. So in home pet sitting, we offer in home boarding where dogs stay at our pet professionals homes, dog walking, in home grooming. And we have a mobile doggy daycare concept called Camp KK, where we pick up dogs, take them to play at the park, um, and then do a fun craft and take them home. That's a lot going on there. A lot going on, yes. I I, I, I definitely want to touch on your expansion to Scottsdale because I think that's that's really fascinating and sounds like a lot of work. Um, You did use a word there, uh, boutique pet care. What does boutique mean to you? I think of boutique pet care as something that is personalized on an individual basis. Um, you know, it's not, no, we always say, you know, no dog is the same, no client's the same, and it's our job to cater to their needs. So whatever service we provide, we try to tweak that. So it makes sense to the pet. It makes sense to their lifestyle um, and accommodates what the client's looking for versus, you know, kind of a catch-all concept of, you know, you're kenneling your dog, you drop them off, you don't hear from them for the next three days while you're on vacation. You know, our job is to try and bring more of a personalized touch to it to kind of connect dog and owner while they're away from each other. Well, and that that kind of, of work, it's not necessarily a, a cookie cutter style of service. Then you're, you're constantly adapting and changing to these individual needs. How do you balance that versus still needing to kind of make things somewhat predictable for you and your team members? Sure. I think that has definitely evolved over the last four and a half years as well. Um, creating policies and setting those boundaries so we have a baseline, but still having enough flexibility to keep it personalized. Yeah, that is, that is a balance of going, okay, we still need to have some standards. We need to be able to, to know kind of what we're walking into, but also being Absolutely. able to go, okay, I can flex this a little bit, or oh, I can take that on because that's a little bit of a unique case, or oh, that's interesting how you give medications or however, and, and still having that sure. personalized Individual again, focusing on the individual, I think is where that power comes in of going. Well, I want this service to be curtailed just to the to meet the needs of this person, so that they really feel seen and heard and cared for. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, back in two thousand and eight, it was eighteen, right when you uh-huh. you decided to kick this off. What July what happened? Twenty eighteen. I what, remember. <laughs> what, what what happened after July fourth? What? <laughs> uh, well, okay, so. Um, You know, I was in my early 20s and I was just trying to figure out really what I wanted to do in life. Um, I am, I will always admit, I've worn a bunch of different hats. I've worked in a bunch of different careers and I just never found what what I felt like I was passionate about, something I could, you know, sustain long term. Um, At that point in time, I was actually a dental assistant. And I didn't mind the job. It, you know, it was an easy nine to five, clock in, clock out. Um, but I enjoyed my lunch breaks much more. I will say that. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I lived um, on my own and I lived with my boyfriend and we had two dogs. We had the black lab and then um, who's not with us anymore, but we have a shepherd husky named Ghost who is still around today. And, um, you know, I just, I love sitting my lunch breaks with them, sitting outside, getting fresh air. You know, we go on walks, we go to the park and kind of over time, you know, um, 
we lived in a town home. We had a fenced in yard. So I kind of was always the friend to be like, Hey, you know, we're going on vacation. Do you want to watch our dog? And, um, you know, it just brought me us so much joy. It gave my pets a friend to play with. It kept them busy. It wore them out. And, uh, which is always wonderful. Tired dog's a good dog. Um, but more so, you know, we had fun doing local things. Like if a doggy boutique was opening, we'd take our friend's dog by, snap a cute picture, or if we go to the park or go get a pup cup. And, you know, my friends would be like, Katie, this is awesome. Like, this is the best part of vacation. You're sending us all these like super adorable pictures of our dog having the time of their life. Like, you know, why aren't you doing this? And, um, you know, it just kind of got to a point where I was still like, you know what, like going down the dental path is really not for me. This is just a nine to five job. It's not a passion. And, um, you know, we, myself and now my fiance, um, we're getting married October 14th. So very soon. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, We, you know, we sat down and it was just a conversation of like, hey, you know, if this is what you want to do, you are a self-starter, you're a go-getter, there are ways to do it, you just got to figure out how. And so I woke up on July 5th and I told myself, you know what, I'm going to quit my job today. I ordered, I think, 50 business cards off of um, Vistaprint and I made a Facebook page and I said, okay. This is how I'm going to start and I'm going to figure it out from here. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, listening to that, you said it's a, this is a nine to five, but it's not a passion. And I think that's the balance that we have to find. And many of us find ourselves staring into going, well, I'm doing this one thing, right? I'm doing this thing currently and it's, it's fine, right? It's, it's okay. It, it pays the bills and it, it does something for me and I, I somewhat enjoy it. But there's this other thing that I keep looking over and at going, but what if, but what if? Yeah. And, and, and there, re- there comes a time where we stop asking what if and we go, okay, let's do, right? And we dive into that. That's, and that's like, I mean, you know, just communicating with other people who want to kind of tap into this industry or friends who start their business. It's like, like, how do you know it's time? You don't, you never know. But you know what? If you don't risk it and you don't try to at least like tap into something you feel like you're passionate about and like you want to make your career, you'll never know. And so, you know, I will say, um, oh gosh, someone asked me the other day, they were like, could you ever imagine like how this is, you know, grown? I'm like, no, because I literally just said, okay, I'm going to quit my job and go for it. And I had no idea what my next step was. So, (laughs) um, but you know, I'm definitely a, a doer and figure it out later. Um, which, you know, isn't always the best, but, um, yeah, just, you know, if you're passionate about something and it brings you joy and you find yourself thinking about it and, you know, wanting to take it to the next level, you know, really sit and think, you know, is this something that I want to make my lifelong career? Yeah. So you, you did that in July 5th, 2018. How quickly was the growth for you? What was the next kind of six months to a year like? You know, I lived in Kansas City my whole life. And so, um, and again, I've held many of jobs. So I feel like, you know, within my inner circle, I've made a handful of connections to initially, you know, start me out. and you know, thinking back, oh gosh, just even compared to now, um, it, it was a slow start. I mean, you know, I was, if you think about the Kansas city area, I was walking dogs out South in the suburbs and then picking up whatever I could. So I walk a 30 minute walk out South and then I drive 45 minutes up to North Kansas city to walk a dog back down to <sighs> Johnson County. And, you know, it was just really like doing whatever I could to get in front of whoever I could to show them what I could do. Mm So, you know, a slower start and, um, you know, just over time definitely built up. And um, I think it was uh, Christmas of 2018. I was working like it was like 5 a.m. until midnight, just driving all day doing check-ins, walking. And I was like, okay, Katie, either you need to think about hiring or you need to figure out how to like not overcommit yourself. 
<laughs> and I still struggle with that today. So I was like, okay, let's hire. <laughs> so, um, you know, it got me to a place where I could, you know, hire my first employee um, uh, after Christmas of 2018. Um, so like yeah. 2019, beginning of the year. Um, and we've just, you know, have slowly increased growth from there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important to remember, especially people who are coming into the industry. I see these questions a lot on Facebook groups. How long did it take you to do this for X number of hours? How long did it take you to get your first client? How long? Did it... It's different for everybody. Absolutely. But we need, we need to be prepared for the slow growth. Yes. We also need to be ready to react when things kind of get crazy because you just yeah. you just never know. And you know there are pe- the people who go, I'm going to plan this out to the nth degree. And then there are the rest of us who go, we're going to feel this out as we go. And and, and we do kind of have those wake up moments where we go, oh, I don't want this anymore. I know for me, it was actually Christmas of last year where I was sick. I was I was just yes. ill, but I had a full day of visits and that really woke me up. I mean, even after nine years going, okay, I, I cannot physically do this at this level and still be there for everything else in my life that I want to have around and have that balance. So it's really yeah. time to start bringing other people into this. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> it is, it, it is so hard when you're, you know, start, it's your own company and you're like, you know, where does my, where, where's my cap? Where are my limits? When do I stop? Because, yeah. you know, your whole goal is, you know, we work in a, customer service industry and we care for people. And so it's, it's hard to say no, and it's hard to create those boundaries. Um, yeah, absolutely. I've had, I've, it's been interesting to describe that to new people who brought on and hired of just what this industry can do of, I know it feels maybe slow right now because I'm giving you a little bit, but it's going to very quickly become a, a 5 a.m. to midnight kind of day for you if we're not careful and we don't yeah. manage this well. Yeah. I, um, you know, anytime we bring on someone new, we try to kind of, we, we ease them into it. That's always say, I always say, you know, oh, we're not going to throw you to the wolves. Ha ha. And then, you know, um, the week after they're like, oh my God, my feet hurt. I've been in my car commuting all day. Like, you know, my leggings have holes in them. And I'm like, yeah, it's, uh, it picks up quick. That's for sure. Um, and, you know, we have, we have an, a handful of amazing team members who are just go-getters and self-starters. And, yeah. you know, then that's a conversation of, hey, let's, like, check ourselves a bit. You know, we work in an environment where you can work as much as you want or as little as you want. But we got to find the balance because I want you around long term. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> we we do have to come in and kind of protect them, right? And I kind yeah, of I've, I've been been describing it a lot of like this. I, I I have enough work to to bury you in your days if we're not <laughs> careful. So we need to you need to be checking in with us and letting us know, hey, how when you know is this enough? Is this too much? Is this too little? So that we don't look up and they're like, I got to cut out because I I I'm just yeah. it's taking over my life. It's like okay, that, we don't want that, right? So you you hired in the first of 2019. Now you've got a pretty amazing team surrounding you. Could you tell us about them? Um, so we kind of hover around anywhere between 50 to 60 team members in all three states. Wow. Um, we, you know, I think it's kind of a 50-50 split between just the dog walking side and then like the dog walking, you know, mobile doggy daycare side and then pet sitting. Um, and I mean, our team is everything. I think that, I mean, you know, without them, I, we wouldn't be where we are today. Do your team members really do contribute so much to the company? And I think too often, many people may focus on the quote unquote expenses that come with having a team and having people around you, but really recognizing I, 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 and more importantly, my company cannot meet the needs and demands and the mission that I have without these people around me. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think when we, you know, it's been definitely a learning experience over the last four years, especially post pandemic and, you know, just kind of growing with the times, but, you know, increasing rates to be able to offer people a more livable wage or, you know, being able to figure out how to condense their like radius location. So they're, you know, not spending as much time driving in their car, you know, it's been a constant, you know, 
figuring out how we can make it work best for our team, but also the company too. Obviously, we want to be profitable. Um, and I feel like finding that balance between, you know, okay, like I, that was a hard thing for me at first is, you know, like I want to grow. What can I afford to lose? And what am I, you know, what can I afford to gain from it too? Yeah, those are the, those are the, the cost benefit analysis that we, that everybody, every single one of us has to take and judge and go, is this something I'm willing to take on? And you, yeah. you said you have kind of a 50 50 split kind of across your services. Do, do you, are you, you, you're still offering in home boarding in your sitter's homes. How do you make that work? Um, you know what? When we are interviewing, we have the discussion of, you know, if they're interested in pet sitting, we say, you know, we have two options. We have team members who, you know, opt one over the other, or they do both. And it really just depends on your personal lifestyle and what works for you and your home and your family. Huh. Um, you know, in home boarding. Um, how it works on our end is we, our clients' dogs stay in our homes. We always do a vetting process. We do a meeting prior to ensure the dog is comfortable, the owner's comfortable, and the team member's comfortable. Um, you know, anytime you get a dog out of their own environment, it could be, you know, completely chill or it could be pure chaos. So um, <laughs> trying to try, you know, and, and, and rightly so, you know, like they, they don't know our house. They're not used to it. They don't understand how to like hit the bell to go out back when they don't know where it's at. And so, um, you know, just that vetting to see, you know, is this something that works with your lifestyle? Do you work from home? Would you rather be, you know, watching a dog in the comfort of your own home? And if so, you know, that meeting prior to make sure it's a good fit um, is extremely important. I will kind of go off here and say with all pet sitting, um, we require a meeting beforehand if it's a new client um, and not a repeating client. Um, And sometimes even if it is a repeating client and it's a new team member watching the dog, we'll do a meeting again. And these are important. And I always tell our team, it's not you know, it's for the client. Yes, but it's for you to make sure that you are comfortable, make sure that you're okay with taking this on. Okay. With their, you know, realistic needs when you meet with them in person and, you know, we value our team and we trust them and we want to make sure that they're comfortable and okay with it. So they are the ones who give us the sign off if, you know, they want to continue with the overnight sit or in home boarding. Now, for you, do you have policies for how they keep their home or maintain their home? Or how do you direct them for keeping that environment safe and and kind of consistent between sitters' houses? Sure. We, um, you know, just a baseline of rules. And a lot of, I mean, majority of our team members who have dogs over, they're dog parents themselves. And so, you know, they understand the dangers that you could put a dog in, whether it be, you know, toxic products or foods, things like that. Um, but you know, overall, um, just making sure our team members have a clean home and accessible home. Um, if they have a backyard, it must be fenced in. If not, dogs have to go outside on a leash at all times. We have a leash policy or a fenced in policy. Mm. Um, because, you know, again, this is a big liability company. And so we got to make sure that the dogs are safe and enclosed or either on a leash. Um, and then, you know, as far as like the safety of kenneling, things like that, I will say we, you know, do have those conversations with our team and the clients, you know, some clients do kennel their dogs, some let them free roam. And, you know, if a dog's in your home, you can kind of test and see that first initial 24 hours, how they're going to do out, or if they, you know, need to actually be kind of fenced in an area or kenneled. Yeah. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is really, again, going with that personalized feel of going, mm-hmm. what's going to work best for the situation. And then more, sure. and importantly in this reaching out to the sitter themselves and making sure it's going to work for them as well. And that each time that match is made, it's a very specific process. Sure. And we as, you know, management, um, Claire is our, uh, she's been with us for the last three and a half years. Um, she is our, you know, overall company manager, but she kind of runs the whole sit and stay side of the company. Okay. And, you know, she's great. I, I think the biggest thing too, is just having that clear communication with your team members of like, you know, we have a check-in process. So for example, if a dog, if it's staying over or we are staying at a client's house for every two nights, they have to send us a update. 
Um, oh. And that's over email. It's a questionnaire. They send photos. They have to report and show photos of tax exchanges with the client. So communication with the client. So we can, you know, know what's going on there. Um, so, you know, we get that. It's just, you know, it's, it's a report basically to make sure that everything's going smooth. Our team's doing their job. <laughs> the clients are, you know, doing everything as they had promised. Um, but at the same time, just having the open communication too, to make sure that your team knows like, Hey, we have your best interests in mind. And like, right. you know, we want to make sure that you're taken care of and okay. And if something's going wrong, let us step in so we can help you. Have you heard of time to pet Doug from bad to the bone pet care has this to say. Time to Pet has made managing my team and clients so much easier. Our clients love the easy-to-use app and scheduling features, and our sitters love being able to have all of their information organized and easily accessible. My favorite feature is the instant messaging. By keeping conversations on Time to Pet, we are able to monitor our team and ensure nothing ever falls through the cracks. If you're looking for new pet sitting software, give Time to Pet a try. Listeners of our show can save 50% off your first three months by visiting timetopet.com slash confessional. Yeah, I think you you start training pretty pretty early. I mean, one of your newest team members, Ricky, seems like she's off to a really good start with your training yes. program. <laughs> yes, she's actually walking now, so we're ready to just give her a leash and like set her set her free. <laughs> <laughs> what's 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 that process been like of, of 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 raising Ricky and raising a daughter and now running and then still running the company? Oh my gosh, um, you know what? I've figured it out. I can't do it all. And, um, being a mom has humbled me. I, you know, I, I, and and the best way possible. Um, I think having Ricky has actually helped me kind of take a step back and figure out, okay, Katie, we need to reel it in here. We need to figure out how, you know, other ways to grow and expand versus maybe me doing everything like events or, um, managing, you know, day to day, you know, communication with clients, whatever it may be. And, um, so yeah, I think, you know, Ricky has been a blessing in disguise in that aspect. Um, but also too, I mean, being a mom has been, I always say it's the best job I've ever had that I didn't know I needed. (laughs) And, um, she has been, she's just so fun. You know, her third word was puppy. (laughs) If you ask her what a puppy says, she goes, woof, woof. Um, she's got three brothers at home who she just adores. And when we have, you know, I have a handful of regular clients that come over, um, and, you know, obviously trusting dogs around my child who is mobile and all over the place (laughs) is so important. Um, so, you know, that whole process of making sure a pet is okay with a child is, you know, vital as well with like that initial meeting, but, you know, we're lucky that we have very consistent clients who stay over with us still all the time. It is honestly a rarity if we just have our three dogs at our house still. Um, Typically we're, you know, averaging anywhere from like four to five, but Ricky, she just loves them. Um, It's, it's really, really sweet. And like, just warms my heart when um, you know, she wakes up in the morning and she gives him a hug. Goes, so <laughs> Aw, I, I, I love hearing that, that Katie. And I know that this is kind of a struggle for, for a lot of people who have a, a kid or have a child. Now they're going, how do I make this work? Because this job is this industry is so demanding on us and our time. And now all of a sudden we look up and we go, I, I, I have, a, I have all these things to do now. So what, what kind of advice would you give somebody who's listening who has a young child or is, is pregnant and, and, and sure. about to be in that same position? I think first and foremost, you don't have to give up on your dream, like keep pushing forward. You just have to figure out how to navigate that. And I think the biggest thing is setting boundaries for yourself, mm-hmm. um, figuring out like what makes sense for you and your family. You know, when Ricky was, young, she would go on walks with us and we carry her and her little baby Bjorn. And, you know, um, it was fun. It was great. And then she got heavy and it was, you know, fun and great, but hard. And now she can walk and it's like, this is just not possible. Um, so, you know, we've had to figure out, uh, me, my fiance as well, he is now full-time at Katie's kennel. And so we have both just had to figure out with our schedule, you know, 
what makes sense? Is it working a half day and then being able to office during her nap time? Um, is it, you know, maybe not having as much of a hands-on workload a few days a week so we can, you know, take her to a sitter or, you know, take her out to do something and then get work done um, while we're on the go from our phones. Um, but just finding that balance and, you know, giving yourself grace too. I think I was extremely hard on myself feeling like, oh my gosh, like, People are going to think I'm just sitting at home eating bonbons all day. You know, I'm just trying to navigate this. And it's so, it's, it's hard. And as a new mom, like, you know, and as a, you know, a mom in general, you just, there's so, so many society standards that are placed on us. And, you know, I think that taking a step back, giving yourself some grace and setting boundaries. And again, just realistically thinking what works for my lifestyle. So I, one, can be present with my kid two, be present with my company and three, be okay with myself. <laughs> so it, it, it definitely is finding that entire balance, right? And going, okay, how, how can I still make my dreams work and realizing that the business can, can change and that mm-hmm. what we thought we were going and working towards is going to be probably a little bit different and that we can change our obligations and change our priorities in life and, and still be able to continue to work forward for those things and make it work for us. I think that's, we can't lose sight of that is we can make the business work for us when we have these other things yeah. that come along. And I, that's hard to do, you know, it's, that's definitely easier said than done, especially, oh, yeah. you know, when your whole every day is catering to everyone else's needs. But um, yeah, again, just being able to like, take a breath and be like, okay, what do I need? <laughs> exactly. Well, and you mentioned kind of the everybody aspect of this. And I think that's a major role and thing that, that Katie's Kennels does a lot of, of, you even describe your business as a, as a community. Uh, what, what does that mean? And, and why is that? Um, you know what? I think community comes from our clients who, you know, we often come together, whether it be at events, whether it be on social media, whether it be through an email chain. Um, you know, I truly, it's, it's been incredible to see. We've had many of clients meet each other and become lifelong friends. Um, and it's all because they have the same, you know, thing in common. They love their dog. Um, you know, it might start with like, oh yeah, my dog gets walked by so-and-so from Katie's kennel too. Or like, oh, I have a friend, she and they're obsessed. And, you know, it might, we could be, you know, that like, you know, common connection, but it truly has just brought so many people together um, uh, within like, especially the Kansas City area. And, you know, something we're definitely trying to establish in the Scottsdale area as well. Now, do you do that through like in, intentionally of giving people's information or is that through hosting of events or, or how does, how does, how do those connections come about? Definitely through hosting of events. Um, okay. You know, when we hosting of events and then social media, social media is a big one for us. Oh. Um, it's definitely where we've built our brand from. And it's also, you know, when we post dogs in our story, we always ask clients, Hey, can we, you know, can you put your Instagram handle here? If not totally fine. Like we don't have to tag you, but, um, you know, let's say so-and-so has a Corgi, someone's following us. They're like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. We have a Corgi too. You know, they instantly follow each other. And then, you know, start to attend maybe meetups even outside of Katie's Kennel. And so I think social media has been huge for us to kind of, you know, build that amazing pet community that's already been built here in Kansas City, but just bring people that much closer together. It really is important to have people get that connection because it, it does a lot of things. I think more important here, it, it helps people be, feel part of something a lot larger than themselves, like not Absolutely. just as, from a client, but also staff and of the company as well, having this bigger, larger, grander vision of, yeah, we don't just walk dogs and take care of them. We, we connect people, right? We build, yeah. we're being part of this building community it really does give a lot of, of, of power behind what you do and does kind of guide your actions as you, you interact with people. Now you mentioned, we mentioned events there. I, I did want to talk about the role of events in your company and kind of when and the, why the, why you started hosting them in the first place. 
Oh gosh. Okay. Um, I think my like history from events comes from working previous jobs where, you know, our goal was, it was maybe sales driven. So we would, you know, pop up at a, oh gosh, a coffee shop with a table with information just to talk about the company. And, you know, when I was first starting Katie's Kennel, I was like, Hey, I know how to do this. Like this helped this company grow. Maybe it'll help my company grow, but you know, I, I'm definitely not like a, you know, sit behind a table, hand out a business card kind of gal. I think it's, you know, people, what draws people in is creating something fun and being over the top and being extra. And so, you know, when we would do these, we'd be like, yeah, we'll bring a photo booth or like, oh yeah, we'll bring some like, you know, fun toys or photo opportunities. And it just kind of (laughs) snowballed into us hosting, you know, breed specific events, um, holiday specific events. Um, and even like we, uh, partner with power and light district in downtown Kansas city. It's, It's called pups on a patio. We do it once a month and it's a taco Tuesday at a, uh, guys dive Mexican restaurant. Uh, it's guys, guys dive taco bar. And, you know, it's just, it's a great way for us to get in front of people and, you know, show what we really do. I think sometimes people are like, oh, they're the events girls. And we're like, but we're so much more, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, it's a fun way for, you know, us to get involved with the community, um, you know, meet new dogs, meet new, you know, potential clients. Um, and also like, you know, do something fun and give back in a way that, you know, people, you know, they come to this restaurant, they don't expect we're going to have a full blown, you know, Kansas city chiefs themed photo shoot for their dog. And so they get to take that little trinket home with them. And, um, yeah, events. I mean, we, we like to do it big. I do, you know, over the last year, we've definitely have kind of scaled back a bit since I've had Ricky. Um, but kind of, you know, heading into the fall and winter, we have some really fun stuff planned. Um, And then, you know, again, just to touch on staffing, I have a gal on staff who who kind of helps me headway all of that as well, which is so helpful and so important. Um, And luckily enough, her background is in events. So shout out to Erica. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's really cool to have that, that um, internal expertise as well, because that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know that kind of I'm sure that helps Erica feel even more ingrained and in contributing to the company and using yes. more of her skill sets than than you know the, the than the pet care I'm you know I'm sure that's fulfilling as well but to also be able to turn and go and I I love events I can still contribute to this in this way it helps build a lot of that relationship and, and community that way as well internally absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I know when people think of events, you know, you say you you go big, you have photo shoots, you've got all these props. How do you balance out the fact that, you know, these events, sure, they, um, you know, they're fun to put on, but they also cost, right? They, sure. they don't, they're not free. So how do you balance that out of going, <laughs> we, I'm sure you wish they were, of going, how do I balance spending the money to this event knowing that I'm not going to get an immediate or one for one return on that? Or how do you, how do you balance that in your, in your mind? You know, um, that's definitely something we've learned the hard way over the last few years. Um, we, you know, have had to definitely scale back a bit because, you know, some things didn't make sense financially. And while it hurt, maybe more of my feelings, (laughs) because I was like, I want to do this. I want to put this on, you know, when you have to pay for staffing, when you have to pay for props or marketing materials, you know, that stuff adds up. And, um, you know, really figuring out like for events, you know, we set a goal of doing maybe like one, maybe two max, sometimes three a month. But, you know, when we set, you know, figure out, okay, what do we want to do? Does this make sense? Are we going into it with the, you know, this is a great way for us to build business or is this more of like a charitable opportunity for us? Um, And then, you know, just really trying to, as far as like, you know, these photo booths or things like that go, like being able to recycle and reuse, um, currently looking at the right side of my office that is my storage compartment. Um, I have four shelves with 
four huge tubs per shelf labeled by season. So being able to just, you know, reuse things. And then also to, um, you know, over the last year, it's been, okay, we have people reaching out to us for these opportunities. They want us to come and put on these events. How can we get them involved to help us cover costs too? Mm -hmm. You know, if there's, a need they want us to come out they're like oh those katie kennel people they have a great time like they put on a big old party with the cutest little photo booth like you know and if they if, if someone's knocking on your door it's a great opportunity to, to sit back and be like okay is there something i could either profit off of this or could they help me with the cost mm-hmm. and while i will say you know an end goal for me would definitely be to at some point, you know, make a profit itself off the event. Um, we have had a lot of companies, you know, apartment complexes when we've done events for their residents, um, you know, corporate partnerships, they are willing to help cover the cost for it for at least like, you know, our time and props. And so that's been cool as well because yeah. we evolve. Yeah. And, and, and not being afraid to ask for that kind of thing too, especially if you have multiple parties involved going, okay, yeah. look, we may be spearheading this, but what is everyone else contributing? Right. And right. knowing, cause that, that does a couple things. It, it helps make sure that it defers the cost and takes some burden off of you. It also gets other people's skin in the game. Cause it's easy for people to say, oh sure. Yeah. I'll be there on the phone yes. or email, but for them to have actually paid for something or are required to bring a prop or something yeah. like that, it brings, again, it's that community aspect of going, everybody's coming together to yeah. make this a, a thing um, so that it can, you know, I'm sure one of the other goals is, as you said, to maybe three events a month. We want to be able to do this for per- for perpetuity and always be able to do this. And that takes a, a group, that takes a community to be able to do that. Yep, absolutely. And you are 100% correct. It definitely gets, you know, the other parties involved and it makes it it makes them want to promote it more. It makes them want to tell yeah. their residents or their, you know, um, clients or patrons, you know, Hey, come out to this. We have this big thing going on. Like it gets them excited. It gets their staff excited. Um, I will say, you know, in the past we've shown up for events and people are like, who are you? Why are you here? And so when you're able to, you know, get the whole, you know, both parties involved, um, your events are better for both people, you know, we're profitable for everyone down the line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, it's it's better for everybody at the end of the day to help that. Now, if somebody's listening to this, going, "My goodness, um, I, photo booths, big partnership. What? How do I? What, what what advice would you give people who are just thinking about hosting their first event?" You know, I think start with the basics. Um, you don't have to do anything big and bougie. It can just be setting up a table to get your word out there, putting a twist on. You know, your if you have, let's say, a business card, you know. Put it in like a cute little cellophane bag with like a dog biscuit in there. You know, there's just different, you know, there's many ways that are cost effective to elevate any experience. And so it's just, you know, figuring out what is your budget? What, what, what is my thing? You know, it's not sometimes this, this kind of stuff, it's not for everyone. And that's fine. You know, this is some people probably look at what we do and they're like, my God, this is over the top. Like what on earth, who has the time to think of this? And, you know, and that's fine. It's just, it's figuring out your niche and, you know, what makes sense with your brand. The National Association of Professional Pet Sitters is hosting their in-person conference in New Orleans, Louisiana. Refresh, Rethink, Revive will be hosted March 3rd through the 5th, 2023. Join pet sitters from across the country to listen to speakers like Dr. Marty Becker, Jennifer Anderson, Jamie Migdahl, and Arden Moore, and so many other amazing professionals. Get your tickets today at PetSitters.org. And that's important is going, what does an event look like for me? What does it mean for my company to put on an event? How are we going to brand this? How are we going to message this? How are we going to invite people? And that's where we really do start putting our own spin on things. And and I have to say, Katie, I absolutely love all of your your brand colors and everything that you guys have. What what is what does your brand mean to you? Oh, you know, it's fun, it's inviting. Um I feel like, you know, just, gosh, when I, when I, when I made my first business card, we'll start there. (laughs) It was brown and it had teal lettering. 
And, you know, I went with just like a very, I, I mean, I used like a Vista print design and it was cute and I loved it. And, um, the more I kind of, you know, got into posting on social media, like our stories and like utilizing gifts and just kind of like seeing what was out there and figuring out like my own identity and kind of where I wanted it to go. I was Mm. like, okay, I want this to be, you know, fun and poppy and, you know, bright and colorful, um, not as serious, I guess, you know, and that's, you know, silly to say, because this is such a serious, you know, industry to be in. Uh, I mean, it's, it's important. It's a huge liability, but just to make it fun and welcoming, um, as far as choosing the colors, I actually, I had a really great opportunity with a friend to do a photo shoot for my brand. And I, you know, she was like, well, what do you want the backdrops to be? And I was like, oh gosh, I don't even know. Like, pink yellow blue like that's fine and it just has evolved from there okay. so <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah the pink yellow and blue are still in there so that, that, yes, that perfectly works yes. perfectly <laughs> incorporating a little quarrel every so often yeah um, and you know my i always think of this is so silly but i always think of katie's kennel as kind of like my alter ego um i'm a very you know dark neutral person i'm pretty quiet um myself but when i get in front of when i speak about my brand or when i'm representing my brand i'm you know it it just again it just it feels like an alter ego and so it's just it's kind of fun to like tap into that role and you know that voice behind our social media too has always been mine from the start of like you know keeping it fun, keeping it real, you know, being silly, being sarcastic. (laughs) And, um, you know, it just, I I feel like Katie Skinnell's voice is one that, um, again, you know, it's mine, but it's just, you know, it's a, it's a spunkier side, I guess. (laughs) Uh, that is such a fascinating way of thinking about that, Katie, of going, what's the voice of my business? And knowing that it doesn't have to be directly mine. And I know that's something I struggle with. Of I, I think at times my personality comes out well, not too heavily, but but I know it's not exactly what we put out on social media either. And it's this weird balance. And I think you can definitely go both ways because you have to go, I need this to represent who I am in some capacity. I also need to make sure it's connecting with clients and connecting with the people who I want to be working with and representing me and my business well and really refining that. I love that phrase. What's my business's voice? What's the voice of my company and what we're trying to put out there. Where does that come from? And I, I think that helps with with you as you're it's you know you're consistent with the language and you're consistent with the the um the uh, not not uh, the attitude but you know the the snarkiness or things that come yeah, out or whatever that like is, it, yeah. it, it, that does come out extremely consistently. And when we can, like you said, tap into that, it's like okay, I'm in brand mode. I'm in I'm in my voice mode. Yeah. Okay, now how am I going to put this together? I think that's just a, a fascinating thing to. To, to put it in that perspective. Now you've, you, you do a lot more than just, just kennels. Um, did you ever think about changing the name uh, of, of the business? Um, I don't know. We're kind of in too deep now, but I oh. will say, <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, you know what? That's honestly, um, <laughs> every time, you know, we get a one-off, like uh, an email from a new client or a phone call. It's like, where are you located? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I live in the heart of the city, but we're everywhere, you know? Um, yeah. So it is definitely, <laughs> it's a deceiving name. I know it, but you know, um, I also will say I'm part of my brand identity. My name's Katie Kenton. So K K are my initials. And so it was fun to kind of tie that into the brand as well. Um, as of right now, no, no change. We're just going to roll with it and, you know, let people know like, Hey, yeah, we do offer like kindling opportunities, but it's completely different. So it's a great conversation starter. Yeah. Um, and a great way to kind of get people to think, you know, outside of the normal, you know, boarding your dog at the vet or a daycare or whatever it may be. 
I, I think that's so important is getting that conversation started because many times people reach out and they don't know what they don't know and they don't know what they actually need or want and they just know or right. basically based on past experiences, right? Going how, how do I know many people struggle with how do I take somebody interested in boarding and convert them into a dog walking or pet sitting client? And right. and if unless you have a great conversation starter, it's really hard. It's really hard right. to take them. And so you know you have that such opportunity of like I know the name says kennel. Let me tell you about how we do things, right? Like we do a little thing, we do things a little different around here <laughs> and being yeah. able to, to have that, a true conversation and educational moment with them, I'm sure is, is really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. It's really cool when, you know, again, they're like, oh, where are you located? And you're like, oh, you know, we service clients from this point to this point. And they're like, oh, wow, what do you do? And we tell them yeah. and they're like, oh, I didn't even know my dog could stay over at someone's house or yeah. You know, oh, I never even thought about my dog getting a midday break. I'm having to take off of work to go home for lunch. Like, you know, and so, yeah, absolutely. Just generating that conversation and showing them who we are, what we can do. And like, you know, a, a better, you know, plan for their pet, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that, again, that that's all part of that that brand, that name, all that is is coming and flowing from that that voice and what you want best for them. And p- part of that, Katie, I know is is that you sell sell merch, and, and listeners can't see the shirt you're wearing, uh, but it is, I think, one of your your shirts that you sell on your store. Um, <laughs> and so, yes. w- w- when did you start selling merch, and why was that important for you to do that? Um, I started selling merch. Uh when the pandemic hit because I didn't have any business. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And I was just trying to figure out, you know, okay, like what's something I've got time on my hands, what's something fun we can do, you know, a way to help us generate some revenue. And, um, my best friend, she's a designer. She, you know, I sent some ideas her way. She came up with a few com- um, concepts And we were like, okay, you know, like, well, it's pandemic. I don't have a ton of money to back this. Let's try some pre-orders. Let's see if anyone really wants this, you know. In my mind, I'm thinking, I want this because it has my name on it. Like, who, (laughs) but, you know, like, who who wants to rock something that says Katie's Kennel? Well, we had an amazing turnout. Um, And so, you know, over time, it's just been like slowly releasing stuff where our team can purchase and wear. Um, so it keeps it fun and new and interesting for our team, um, as well as our clients too. You know, we have a lot of diehard Katie's Kennel fans out there who love to support us in every way that they can. And um, sometimes it's by wearing a fanny pack with our logo on it so they can walk their dog, or sometimes it's a t shirt. Um, and then also tapping into, you know, like, we just, we, we've over the last, I think it's two years now, um, we have a crew neck t-shirt that we launched that says, um, you know, my dog only barks for the chiefs. And so, you know, doing something fun that's local that gets, you know, people excited about, you know, if you're like, I love the Kansas City Chiefs, I love my dog, this is perfect. So um, while we don't necessarily, you know, it, it's definitely not the first I always say, you know, we're not a merch company, we're a pet service company, but it's just something additional um, to have for our clients and our team. Yeah, now, now, are you storing products in somewhere or are you doing more drop shipping kind of things or how do you have uh, that set up? Previously, I was, yes. Previously, okay. my current office closet storage office was also <laughs> my um, shipment center. But... Um, you know, again, taking a step back and thinking, okay, what makes sense? This is too much for me to handle myself. Um, we went to a print on demand company and it's been a game changer. So, you know, the small profits we make from each of it is, you know, just something additional that, you know, we wouldn't have had before. Um, and not something I could even, you know, handle myself on, you know, this scale currently. So, sure. well, I think more importantly there, you, you focused a lot on the stuff it does for the company and you, you just only very recently mentioned, you know, profits and very, very narrow margins because, you know, merchandise doesn't make a whole lot profit margin wise. So it sounds like this really exists 
as something to do a lot and do things for your clients and do for your community above and beyond, you know, making that that little extra money on top. Talked about it at the very beginning. You started in Kansas City uh, and now you are servicing Scottsdale. So connect the dots there for us. Well, it wasn't ever an idea or an option until we have a really wonderful client who I have um, sat for, walked for, built a relationship with the owner and the dog over the last three years. Um, she moved to Arizona and she needed her dog transported to Arizona. And um the cost and just the safety of flying a dog is risky and it's expensive. Um, and she was like, you know, like, would you think about like driving her out here and I can like, you know, put you up at a hotel and you can have a fun weekend in Scottsdale. And I was like, yeah, (laughs) sign me up. Um, and so I actually made it a fun weekend with one of my really close friends. We, Drove Dolly the Doodle from Kansas City, um, stayed in Albuquerque for a night, and then finished in Scottsdale. And um, I don't travel a lot. Um, And I I really have only been outside the Midwest a handful of times um, my whole life. And so, you know, going from Kansas City in November when it's muggy and cold and gross to a beautiful paradise in Scottsdale, you're like, oh my God, this is gorgeous. Like the palm trees, it's beautiful. And so it just kind of got me thinking, you know, okay, expansion opportunities, like would this even make sense, you know? Um, And so I just kind of started doing some research while I was there. And when I came home, I started doing a little bit more research and was just like, is there anything like us out there, you know? Um, and from what I found, you know, there are a handful of other pet sitting companies, but, you know, I think we could, you know, add some skin in the game and figure out, you know, could we, um, you know, really expand this? And so I, again, just was like, let's see what we can do hiring wise, you know, I have a kid, I'm here in Kansas city, but so I obviously need a team out there. Um, I put an ad on Instagram again, thank you, social media. (laughs) Um, it did its work. And the first we ended up hiring, I believe four initial employees and they were all from Kansas city. And so I was like, okay, I feel like this is a sign from God. Like, you know, they feel, I feel like I have a relationship with them because I know someone who knows them in Kansas city. Yeah. So we, you know, just started with a team, started to try through events again, get our name out there. And we're coming up on year one in October, end of October. Um, And so, yeah, just slowly growing. It's been exciting. Yeah. Now, were you? Now, you were already operating in two different states, Missouri and Kansas, at the time. So, kind of adding a third one was it much of a of a hurdle for you to kind of now be operating in a third state, or or kind of what was that process like of adding all those new things of you know you're you're now three states as opposed to two? Sure. I mean, you know the the boring side, I always say the, you know, the tax side, (laughs) the one that no one, you know, fully wants to, you know, it's, it's just, that was something to, you know, that was definitely a learning experience as well. But, um, I think, you know, the biggest thing with Arizona is it's such a transplant town. Anytime Mm -hmm. you ask, I, I mean, ask five people, I would say four out of five people, if not five out of five people, are not originally from there. And so the biggest hurdle is, you know, here in Kansas city, all of our team, you know, if not half are born and raised here. So Mm. they know people, it's easy to get the word out. Whereas in Arizona, we really got to work for it. Like, you know, because no one's from there. So they don't have family. They can recommend to come use Katie's kennel. Um, It's been more of, you know, the struggle of finding these new clients through, again, events and how can we get in front of people, you know, things like that. Well, and I know I, I, I joked earlier about how you, you've got training really started early with Ricky, but how, how do you make training work so long distance like that with these brand new hires? Um, I, again, um, staffing is so important. I, I am lucky enough. I, 
Uh, one of my first hires, her name's Brittany. Um, she has been nothing short of amazing. Um, she sees like the growth and potential in this company. Um, and she wants to see it succeed in the area. She's been, you know, kind of my, she's been my right hand person out there who has helped, you know, me with these events has helped me navigate through hiring, through interviews. Um, um, and just, you know, really helping me navigate while I'm here in Kansas city, if I can't be in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Again, finding the right person for that first hire, it sounds like that that's, that was really key going, okay, this first person, they they can't need their hand held. They can't need to be, you know, I've I've got to hire a really independent, extremely knowledgeable, maybe, you know, experienced person for this and knowing it being strategic with how you hire there. Yeah. Yeah. Finding someone who is almost just as passionate about your company as you are is a rarity. I mean, you're not (laughs) going to find someone who loves what you do more than you do, you know, but being able to, you know, kind of pick through and really find those amazing quality people. Um, yeah, hold on to them, do whatever you can, because, you know, it's, it's always so helpful when someone else sees the potential and your growth in your company, um, like you do. Yeah, it really it really does help make that easier and kind of take some of the burden off of yourself because you know, okay, I can trust this person with a lot of of weighty things and maybe they can start being who I bounce ideas off of and yes. get connected with, especially when it's that far removed. So you you're in you're in Missouri, Kansas and and now Arizona. Are you going to start connecting the dots with states in between those or or what kind of what's your future plans? One thing at a time. Oh. I think, um, you know, we uh, we have been lucky enough that we have clients who have flown us out of state if they live out of state half the year to watch their pets. Okay. Um, and a place we really do love to be in is like the Dallas, Texas nice. area. I think that if we were to look at in the future, this is like way out there but tomorrow um, it's okay <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna put a post up tomorrow <laughs> no um <laughs> hiring a doubt no um but you know if we were to expand to another state i would love to look into dallas i think that would be an awesome opportunity i've actually had people message me from the area and they have been like hey do you have you know it's always do you have a, a team out here and i'm like no i don't maybe one day and they're like well, like, what can we do to help? You know, are you looking for someone or, and it's just like, whoa, okay. Uh, maybe <laughs> there is an opportunity there. So yeah, yeah, maybe one day I think, you know, again, my life has been all about just finding, you know, I'm in year one of being a mom, I guess, oh my gosh, year two now. And so just finding that balance between running a business in three States, having a kid. Um, so, you know, one day, We'll add another one to the roster, but okay, perfect. That sounds super super exciting. I can't wait to see all that you have in store, Katie. Um, I thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing with us about yeah. your passion, your community, the importance of those staff and those hires. Uh, but I know that there's just so much that you do and all of your your experience and expertise that you have. So, how can people follow along with Katie's Kennel's journey uh, and get in touch with you and pick your brain if they have a Additional questions. Yeah. Um, our Instagram is a great way. Um, at Katie's period kennel. Um, you can follow us, shoot us a DM. Um, I am the one behind the screen. So if you get a DM back, it is from me. Um, but no, I love to connect and, you know, talk to other pet care companies and individuals as well. And you know, you can't grow unless you learn. And so bouncing ideas off of each other is so important. Um, um, and to, you know, come together as a pet care community. So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear from anyone and, you know, any input that anyone has too, I'm always open to hear. Wonderful. And Katie, I'll have all those links in the show notes and on our website so people can click right to those. Again, thank you so much. I, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this. It's been a real pleasure. Well, thank you. This has been my first podcast and I, you know, going into it was a little nervous, but this has been so fun and, you know, a great opportunity to talk about our brand and, you know, just have a conversation about what we both love. Yeah, absolutely. And have to, yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yes. (laughs) And love to have have you back on, uh, and, and, and catch up with you in the future as you've been doing more stuff. So, and this has been really good. Yeah, absolutely.
I had two really big takeaways from my conversation with Katie. The first was from when she talked about knowing and understanding the voice of her business. This really helped me put into context a lot about how we think about the messaging our business puts out there. How do we want our business to sound and be perceived and be received by the people that we are talking to and messaging and interacting with? Putting it in that context does give our business somewhat of an alter ego or a personality of its own, which can be so helpful for many of us who have a hard time getting out of or away from how we would interact or how we would approach these kind of things. I also appreciated how Katie pointed out that you can't grow unless you learn, really hammering home just how important it is to learn something new, no matter how big or small we think it is in the here and now, from reading a book, listening to a podcast, attending a conference, or sitting down with a friend or other business partner to figure out new ways and hear new information that we can apply to our business. Again, Nothing has to be major earth-shattering or groundbreaking, but it can be new to us, and it might not be something we can use right now, but every piece of information learned and stored is something that we can pull from down the line. We want to thank our sponsors, Time to Pet, and the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters for making today's show possible. Thank you so much for listening. We know we're going into a very busy time of year here in the United States with all of the holidays and time off and vacation clients. So we are here and we hope that you are taking time off and already scheduling that in so you don't burn out through the holidays. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and we'll be back again soon. (laughs) 